Welcome to your writing tutorial. This tutorial will help you write a paragraph response to a prompt from any discipline – math, science, social studies, English, and more. As you watch, feel free to pause to take notes, rewind to understand important details, and look at your assignment and writing as you attend to the example in the video. Ready? Let's go! Today we will explore compare-contrast writing. The writing task for compare-contrast writing may ask you to show similarities between two different subjects. It may ask you to show differences. It may ask you to show different aspects of a single subject, which may be similarities and differences. Let's take a look at a sample prompt from a math reflection. What are the advantages and disadvantages of each representation in finding patterns and making predictions? Here is a student answer. There are many advantages and disadvantages of graph, table, equations, and words in a story. An advantage of a table is you can find the exact data, but a disadvantage is there is no visual aid. An advantage of a graph is you can see a visual aid, but a disadvantage is you don't get exact numbers. An advantage of an equation is you can solve it for any number, but a disadvantage is you don't have a visual aid. An advantage of a story problem is it is easy to understand, but a disadvantage is there is no visual aid. This paragraph demonstrates a few writing flaws. We can take a look at the writing flaw of using A in front of advantage, but that is minor and can be easily fixed. Let's look at more important structural flaws in this paragraph, starting with the topic sentence. The student has written there are many advantages and disadvantages of graph, table, equations, and words in a story. If you want to write a clear topic sentence, you must complete two tasks. You must restate the prompt and answer it. Both of these tasks can be completed in a clear, direct, and short topic sentence. The prompt asks us what are the advantages and disadvantages of each representation in finding patterns and making predictions. In sizing up this prompt and preparing for your topic sentence, you must consider what noun it is asking about. What is the core idea? Advantages and disadvantages may seem to be your core noun or nouns, but in this case, those are comments. Those are the ideas that you are saying about the subject, about the thing. Actually, in this prompt, the subject, the core noun that should be the noun of your topic sentence, is each representation. You are discussing different representations of a given mathematical concept. So each representation should be your topic, sentence, subject. Right now, the student uses the word there, an unclear word at best, as the topic, sentence, subject. Each representation in the finding of patterns and predictions will give advantages and disadvantages. This sentence clarifies by adding a subject that is the prompt subject, each representation. It restates the prompt, so the first task is complete. But does it answer the prompt? Not quite. If we add something, we can answer the prompt. Each representation in the finding of patterns and predictions will give at least one advantage and disadvantage. The phrase at least one indicates an answer. It shows your math teacher that the subsequent paragraph will discuss one advantage and disadvantage of each representation. This may not seem like much, but your math teacher now knows exactly what you will discuss in the subsequent paragraph. It is important to answer a prompt in the topic sentence to give the reader an indication of what will follow. Something as simple as at least one can help. Now the student answer is improved, but we must continue. Let's focus on sentence structure. If we are focusing on the structure of the topic sentence, we should focus on the structure of each sentence in the paragraph, and we can apply some of the same skills. Take a look at this sentence. A advantage of a table is you can find the exact data, but a disadvantage is there is no visual aid. Right now, the student has not used a clear subject. We want to use a strong subject in each sentence. Advantage and disadvantage are not strong subjects. We will rewrite with table. Table is the thing that you are discussing in this particular sentence. You are not discussing advantage and disadvantage, you are discussing a table, and you are showing both the advantage and disadvantage of it. Since the table is your focus noun, it should be the subject of the sentence. A table can provide the exact data, but it does not provide a visual aid. 
moving from advantage to table can clarify your sentence. Let's try it again. The advantage of a graph is you can see a visual aid, but a disadvantage is you don't get exact numbers. The student have obviously followed a pattern. Unfortunately, that pattern is built on a weak subject. We want to use a strong subject, and in this sentence, it seems that the writer wishes to discuss graphs. So use graph as the subject of the sentence. A graph can provide a visual aid, but it does not provide exact numbers. We have moved from advantage to graph. We have clarified the sentence, and it is stronger. The student answer continues to be improved. Each representation in the finding of patterns and predictions will give at least one advantage and disadvantage. A table can provide the exact data, but it does not provide a visual aid. A graph can provide a visual aid, but it does not provide exact numbers. The sentences now flow one to the next. We can increase that flow and the clarity of the paragraph with transition words and phrases. Transition language is simple to use, but it is powerful in its effect. If you use transition words and phrases between sentences, you can clarify how one sentence relates to the next. Your math teacher will see the clear progression of ideas from sentence to sentence. Using words like first, next, or also are simple and easy. But we are working on compare-contrast writing, so we also wish to consider compare-contrast words and phrases, like but, on the other hand, even though, and likewise. You should know transition words and phrases appropriate to the task most students do, but you must use them. The student answer right now does not provide clear transition words and phrases throughout. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. So let's add some. The word but is where we already see some transition language. This shows contrast and it clearly indicates the difference between advantage and disadvantage in each sentence. If we add words like first and next, we can further clarify. First, a table can provide the exact data, but it does not provide a visual aid. Next, a graph can provide a visual aid, but it does not provide exact numbers. These transition words clearly indicate the difference from one concept to the next. Let's review. When you write your paragraph, answer the prompt by finding the correct subject and providing an answer. These two steps will make your topic sentence. And if you read the prompt, you should find the clear noun that will form the subject of your topic sentence. Then answer with something simple that will indicate what you will discuss in the subsequent paragraph. Use strong subjects throughout. Examine each sentence in your paragraph and make sure it is using a clear subject. Use transition language, simple words and phrases appropriate to the task, such as compare contrast writing or sequence writing, can be powerfully effective in joining sentences and helping your reader understand how one sentence presents a different idea from the next sentence. If you follow each of these three steps, you can provide a paragraph that not only demonstrates your mathematical knowledge, but demonstrates your writing fluency and clearly expresses your ideas to any audience.